we're going to be working on some mittens today. So these I cut out of, um, I think they're three quarter inch or almost. Nope. Yeah, technically it would be three quarter inch or the lumber yard would call it that. They're solid wood boards, like a laminated board, <clears throat> not plywood. So I'm going to paint these green. These ones are gonna be green. And we're going to use IOD's brand new Cozy Stamp. So this is part of the 2022 um, IOD winter release. So it's a very exciting. So I'm going to be using DIY paint in Fancy Farm Girl because it's an awesome green and I love it. So we're going to use that one. And get that painted. These would be cute. These little mitts are going to be perfect for decoupage or painting. You can stamp them. I'm super excited about this workshop. This is a workshop that I wanted to do, I don't know, two, three years ago. And I never got my, I never got my poop in a group to get it done. So we're covering up this part up here. So I'm not super concerned about coverage up on the top where the cuff is. And this, the edges, I'm going to be staining with Dark and Decrepit. So that's why I'm not painting those edges. drying really fast but we're just gonna give it a little bit of help this is a new heat tool it's almost completely silent so it's perfect for recording videos because you don't have this blasting noise from my old, my old heat tool. And it gets pretty hot. I was worried about that when I found them. I was worried that they wouldn't get hot enough because I'm used to that industrial heat gun. <clears throat> but they get really hot. Perfect. Now I'll grab the other side. My air conditioner is blasting away. Here I am working on Christmas workshops with my air conditioner going. And it's 30 degrees Celsius outside today. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta plan. Thank you. 
Okay. I haven't used any of the new IOD release yet. I haven't had a chance to play with them, so these stamps will be the first first go with the new products. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean up this edge a little bit before I go ahead with the Dark and Decrepit. And I'm just going to use a wet wipe. And we're just going to wipe this back a little bit. These boards that I used had a uh, primer coat already on them. I bought them for something else. I don't remember what I bought them for. And um, I never did use them. So they've been sitting in my garage waiting to be used. But that white primer coat is actually gonna work out in my favor because when I'm wet distressing, it's actually showing up on these edges, that white primer, <clears throat> which I'm liking. Perfect. So DIY paint is clay based and it wet distresses like a dream. So instead of using a sanding block, which I'm actually going to use a little bit too, but you don't have to, you can just wet distress. So a baby wipe or when I have a really big, when it's a piece of furniture and I have a lot to wet distress, I'll use a, I'll grab a bucket of water and a, a lint-free cloth. And that way I can keep rinsing it out and so you don't get that muddy distress. It's a, it's a nice clean. Time for a new baby wipe. You can see that the paint absorbs that moisture right away. And then a couple more wipes and it'll all come off. So you'll see at first nothing comes off, nothing, nothing, and then all of a sudden it starts coming off. And that's that reactivation magic of DIY paint. works completely different 
than some other chalk paints or like an acrylic based paint like fusion this would be really difficult if not impossible with okay these are already cute okay so now i just want to sand these just a little bit so i have an old sanding block just to kind of clean it up a little bit more i'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see there you go Okay, so it's just brightening up this white. And I want to get a little bit cleaner on the wood edge. Whereas because it's raw wood on the edges, it just absorbed that green paint. And this is all just personal preference. It's not a rule. If you've been following me for any length of time, you'll know that I don't really have any rules. I kind of wing it. Okay, there's one. The dust that you'll get off of DIY paint is like talcum powder smooth. It's a really fine dust. So you only want to sand it if you absolutely have to. It can make a mess. As you can see, I'm going to just wipe this off with a baby wipe to grab that dust. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to use the Dark and Decrepit. So I have the Dark and Decrepit in this other bottle. Um, It comes in a 16 ounce or an eight ounce size. And I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on there. And then I started just using sponges and I just cut them into manageable sizes. And it's a really good applicator. goes on easy and then just wanting to antique that a little bit and crannies. You could actually, as I'm doing this and I'm thinking, you can actually do this step before you paint the green. And that would work too. Like I said, this is my experiment mitts. Right 
in that little thumb. There we go. And I'm just working pretty quickly because dark and decrepit, once it dries, it's dry. It's on there. So I'm just going to put that aside. And let's give these a little bit of a buzz with the heat tool. Because now we're going to stamp. use, actually put those aside for a bit, and we're going to use this cozy stamp. So first off, we'll get it out of the package. And we don't need the masks for this project. So we will leave those there, put that aside. Oh, I'm so excited to use this one. And take this top sheet off. I keep my stamps together like this. Like once I'm done using it, I put it back and I always put the cover sheet back on when I store them. These cover sheets are clear and they're very, very easy to lose. So I've just found that I just write the name on, on this sheet and now it's easy to see. And now, I have, I have a sanding block that says stamps only on it. This I only use to condition my stamps. And how you condition your stamps is before you use them for the first time, you just go over them lightly. You're just scuffing them up because that gives you a better, your medium, the medium that you use actually sticks to the stamp better. It doesn't just bubble on it, which won't give you a very good impression. So that's what this is doing. It's just helping. And I'm just really careful because if you push too hard, you can actually peel your stamp and then you end up sanding the back and that's never good because then it doesn't want to stick properly. And I've done it. Fought with a couple of them, but still usable and I go in both directions so horizontal and vertical and you only have to do this with a brand new stamp once you've done this you never have to do it again this is just the initial conditioning All right, so now you can, I think you can see, it's not so shiny, it's not that shiny black anymore. It's a little bit scuffed up, so that's perfect. So what I want to do, and a couple old ones here. Put my mic back on so you can hear me. There we go. Okay. 
So I just cut thin mounts apart so that they're in little manageable sizes for smaller stamps. Um, I find it's easier than trying to deal with a whole big sheet and, and stamping. So I have been super excited to use these um, cross stitch patterns, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to want to use this guy too. So we are going to be using the masks. Which one's a better size? Maybe we'll use the bigger guy. We'll probably end up using both. little one on one okay so when you're using masks you want to work on your project from the foreground to the background so when you're kind of planning it out in your head you want to plan out what's going to be on the foreground of your image first that's what I'm going to do here and I'm going to use I'm kind of thinking of using where is my green there it is nope So I'm going to go with red because it's Christmas. So I'm going to be using the white, but we're going to be using the tomato, which is the red for these guys. And then I'm going to be doing the pattern in the background with the white. So we'll do one first. And we're just kind of eyeballing where you want it. Pick up your stamp. I use the stamp pad directly onto the stamp. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can um, Grab the ink using a brayer and do it that way and apply it to your stamp. That works too. With practice, you'll find out which method works best for you. Like I said, there's no rules. Look how cute. Oh, that looks so adorable. Okay, I always have baby wipes handy and then I just wipe my stamps off right away. And this works really good. And then every once in a while, I keep them on either the backing or on a thin mount and I give it a good scrub with, I have silicone scrub brushes. They're on my website under, I think IOD tools. And they work really good with just dish soap to scrub all the little nooks and crannies. And you'll also notice that this guy's got a little bit of a red tinge now, that's okay. They just get stained by the ink, but that's fine. Not a baby. Doesn't affect their use whatsoever. Okay, same process. Just gonna dab on the ink. I'm just wiping off any excess because I don't want to accidentally put it on the surrounding area.
try to keep it steady. You don't want to smush it around. So you won't get a crisp image. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to dig out the masks for these two. Actually, I'm going to dry them first because I don't want to smear the ink when I put the mask on. You can seal your DIY paint before you stamp, or you can just stamp directly on the dry paint. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You can do whichever you prefer. Okay, so these are the masks. So once I've opened this and I start using them, I don't try to put them back here. I buy these big Ziploc bags from the dollar store. Well, this one's a Ziploc, but I still think I got it from the dollar store. And I just put the name of the stamp on there and I store all the masks in here. That way they don't get lost. Because otherwise, I don't know if you'll ever find them. Okay, so then you have to look for the reindeer. So here's the big guy. And then here's the little guy. And the purpose of masks, if you're not familiar with them, is to be able to layer your stamps without creating without creating a muddy over stamped image you don't want that and all you do is you just position your mask on top of your stamped image and I'm trying to there Perfect. Okay, so now I'm wanting to use, actually, I think I'm gonna use this one. I had in mind to use that one, but I'm gonna go with this one instead. They're a little bit tough to pull off the backing sheet the first time. Um, once you've got it pulled off once, you'll be fine. So this one, I'm now going to stamp directly on top. I want to see what the other one's going to look like. This was the one I had in mind first, so maybe go with your first instinct. stick with my gut and go with this one. So this is the white. It's called mixing white. And I'm going to use that for this background. And 
And same thing. I'm just gonna clean up around the edges just in case. that where you guys can see it but that so I can see it too okay so now I'm just eyeballing and I'm wanting to center this kind of on the center of this part of the mitten I might not get it perfect but I'm trying this piece as I'm putting it here I'm just kind of looking at the rest of it this is going to leave a mark on this thumb I don't want that so I'm just going to clean that off. I don't need any, I don't need any ink there. So I'm just gonna clean it off now so I don't have to worry about it. to my fingers are kind of grippy from baby wipes the dampness of the baby wipes so it's hard to slide so I'm having to tap it down instead Kind of peeking. Okay. Well, there we go. I like that. And the little mask came up with it. I just wiped the masks off. The masks really stain, which is actually good because it makes them much easier to find next time. I kind of like that. That turned out pretty cute. Okay, same plan on this little guy. Oh, that's the wrong color. <laughs> All right, let's clean that off really well because I don't want red on there. So moral of the story, make sure you grab the right ink before you apply it. Okay, put that away. wipe that off because I don't need trying to keep them the same oh that moved quite a bit hopefully it's not a mess Actually turned out a little bit better. I'm actually wondering if I come in here and just finish off.
Yep. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the mask back on. I just want to finish off. This seems kind of unfinished. I probably should have gone with this in the center and it would have looked a little bit more finished or maybe not. Regardless, it's an easy fix. Get the mask back on. I like how that turned out better. Kind of finished that tip off the mitten. So same thing on this one. Perfect. I love them. Okay, those way. Wipe this guy off. And then I'm going to dry that ink and we're going to clear coat it. This is what I mean by I always put my stamps back on their sheet. That way I know everything is here and accounted for and I'm not looking for anything or not realizing that something's missing. Okay. Now let's dry these little cuties. did not plug in my glue gun. Okay. Get that heating up. These are so cute.
even though the dryer is quiet now, it's still kind of boring. I'm going to use Big Top as a sealer. This is by DIY Paint. It is the clear coat. And I'll just use this brush. It's nice and soft. See how that brought out a deeper green now? It's just a richer, deeper green. It lightens just a little bit as it dries, but it stays, it doesn't stay so light and chalky once you seal it. So cute. Big Top dries super fast, so you don't want to overbrush it, or you'll end up with a kind of a dull, weird looking finish. When you're doing something like these that are kind of rustic looking, that's not a big deal. But on furniture, you want to just brush it on and not play with it too much. a little bit of a dull patch right there where I overbrushed so I'm just gonna give that one another coat put my brush in water you don't want big top to dry on your brush because it'll wreck it the paint DIY paint is fine but Oh, these are so adorable. OK. 
Okay. I think my glue gun is good. All right, so I have these teeny weeny little pieces of fun fur that I want to glue here for the cuffs. Isn't that cute? This is, I don't know if you've tried to find fun fur. It's very expensive. So what this is, is a piece of, oh, I've got the wrong one on the wrong side. A piece of, um, last year around this time of year, uh, Walmart, I found a big, it's like a rug for a kid's room. And this is what it was made out of, a really, really poofy plush rug. So I dug it out and I cut the backing off and yeah, perfect fun fur. Love it. I might have to. Okay, now let's see if my glue gun, oh yeah, we've got glue happening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang these so that they can hang on your door this way I think put them together they can hang on the door or they can just be little little hanging ornaments I think they're adorable little bells on them maybe but I'll have to I don't have any of that stuff here yet um, I'll have to do that off camera, but. So there you go, Christmas mittens, or just winter mittens. They don't have to be Christmassy, but cute little winter decor for your house. All right guys, thanks for watching.